Happy Thursday, Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. Uh, channel's evolving into a little bit of football now. I brought you the video a couple nights ago about the commitment from Oklahoma, uh, Ogamuro. Uh, so trying to evolve more into that. This channel's been focused mainly on basketball and baseball. But I uh, said, you know, want to get more into football. It's just coming up that time. And, uh, you know, we're starting to evolve into it. 865 Live is this weekend for Tennessee football, and it's shaping up to be a big, big weekend for them. Now, do I expect them to get any commitments? I don't know about that. But, um, you know, like I've read before, this weekend is more about continuing to establish relationships, build those relationships with the coaches, with the players, get with those, uh, you know, just continue to build that. And, of course, recruits with recruits. And you got to expect George McIntyre on campus. But the big visit to me, and I just saw another one right as I was going to record this that I'll talk about here as well. But David Sanders Jr. has told Tom Loy of 24-7 Sports, or his mother, uh, Tom Loy, said, confirmed they will be in Knoxville this coming weekend. That's a big one, Tennessee. It's the third unofficial visit for David Sanders to Knoxville. And it's believed, I saw Anna Adams with 24-7 as well, talked about she feels it's Ohio State and Tennessee right now. At the top, said not to count out Georgia. Also said thinks he likes Clemson a lot, but doesn't know that Clemson will have what it takes in the end to do that. And uh, as much as he's coming to Knoxville, um, distance from home, you can't discount any of the program. This is a big boy recruiting matchup here for sure. If you're going to win, if you're going to become the best, you have to win these type matchups. This one's Tennessee's been on hard. I've got to think if you put together a board of Tennessee's top recruits that they wanted, I got to think, you know, excluding ones already in the boat, excluding McIntyre, any others already in the boat, I got to think David Sanders is number one on the list. I have to think that's number one. He is, to me, if he is what he, you know, what, what he's supposed to be, to me, if you're a number two rank, number three rank recruit, whatever it is, you're ready to come in and contribute immediately. Five stars should only be guys that are ready to come in and make an immediate impact. There should be at no point in recruiting rankings that a guy should be a five star if he's not ready to step on the campus of his choosing and contribute immediately. If you're more of a project, you're, you know, tops of a four star, maybe a three. It's not about potential down the line to me. It's about where are you now? Are you ready to contribute or not? So if David Sanders, again, Coming in this weekend, he's from Charlotte, North Carolina, Providence Day School, 66270, according to 24-7. Um, Crystal Ball does favor Clemson 100%. I've heard, I've seen more Tennessee talk. I've seen more Ohio State since he visited up there recently as well. I just think Clemson is, uh, Clemson's shooting itself in the foot with their philosophy. And, hey, Dabo's, he's going to do what he wants to do. All right, it's his program. Paul Feinbaum talked about Dabo the other day that he's thinking three to five years and Dabo's out. I think Dabo is moving his way into getting run off here in the next couple of years unless he changes. All teams around the country, they're adapting to NIL. They're adapting to the portal. I mean, Dabo, he, he, you got to respect him, I guess, for being stuck in his ways in a respect. But, you know, I know when I went to the Clemson-Florida State game last year, talking to some fans, they were – really not understanding why, you know, their words, why we're not trying to improve our team, why all these other teams, especially Florida State, who they were playing that day, are out, um, you know, making those improvements. But this is going to be, this is a big recruitment, this David Sanders recruitment. Obviously, you got to think some money's in the equation. I've heard it from a good source before, a source of a source, we'll just say, on that. And I'm not sitting here telling you I have inside information or nothing. I do run across some things. Uh, with people I know a little bit there, but I've heard a source from a source that when it comes to NIL money, Tennessee's focus is quarterback, offensive tackle, defensive line. And I think that's shown a lot with how they've recruited those positions. Offensive tackle, I mean, we could probably debate that one, but they were able to get heard from LSU. We're going to see how it goes in this recruiting battle. I know last year on 8-6 Live, Tennessee really did not get much. They got Peyton Lewis running back out of Virginia to commit. They really didn't get anybody else off that list. The year before, I think it was a little bit better. How do they finish this year with this 865 life? Um, it's a big event for them. It's something they've got to knock out of the park and build 
as we get towards fall, as we start working our way towards football season. Um, what, a little over three months away to it. Uh, baseball, of course, wrapping up now. Got at least, it's got at least another weekend after this one, if not more. Possibly, you know, three to four more weeks, depending on how far they go. Basketball, we're just waiting here on Chaz Lanier, Lady Vols. I got a Lady Vols video coming. Um, we'll record right after this as Kim Caldwell added to her staff today, uh, added a fifth assistant coach. So I'm going to record a quick video on that and drop it as well. But uh, any football recruiting, we'll try to get more on top of this moving forward as to where Tennessee's at. It, this is a big weekend. I talked about, I saw right before, come on, Jamie French, the wide five-star wide receiver, uh, said he will be in Knoxville this weekend as well. So it, you know, where's Tennessee going in that recruitment? I've seen conflicting things about maybe they're on the outside looking in, but Tennessee's continuing to swing on that one. Uh, the longer you stay in it, who's to say you don't have a shot? And you've got George McIntyre. You've got to think he's going to be out recruiting as well. Any of these guys are in the boat. Hopefully they're out recruiting. You know, sometimes your peers and stuff as well. But um, this is a big recruiting cycle for this coaching staff this year. Uh, I thought it was a decent class last year, but, man, you look, there was a lot of misses in that class that could have put that up to being, you know, a borderline, if not top five class this year, they've got to finish on that. They, I'm not saying they have to have a top five class. You need to at least be top 10 and at your big positions of need, you've got to have that star studded uh, cast. David Sanders and George McIntyre would be pretty dang good. Uh, just say that. So Tennessee, I mean, it seems like they're doing all they can in this Sanders recruitment, you know, Sometimes your best may not be enough, but I think the way it's sounding, Tennessee has positioned themselves probably about as good as any other team out there. That's not for me to sit here and say they're going to win that recruitment because you never know. It's a again, you're going against the best of the best. You've got to win that at some point. And who knows? I don't know when he has a decision set, but you get results on the field that could go a long ways as well. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in with me. Um uh, Talked last night, did the live show on baseball. No overreaction for me on that. Tony Vitello had a plan. I respect it. It's not a big deal to win in Hoover. It's just not. Um, and if they lose today against Texas A&M, that's fine. They're sitting, this, they're recovering this weekend, getting ready for when it actually matters. This team wants to win a national championship. They won an SEC tournament two years ago. They got put out in the Super Regionals. I think they would take Omaha over that SEC championship. I think that's where they're planning to go this year as well. Uh, I did talk about Chaz Lanier yesterday. I mean, who knows? I, I still feel confident he ends up a ball, but who knows in this one? I feel like there's been a lot of twists and turns in that one as well. So he he could end up in any of the three when it's all said and done. I'm going to stick with the consistent and say it's going to be Tennessee in the end. Would I bet money on it? Nope. I would not bet a penny on it, as a matter of fact. But uh, – you know, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you're a Lady Vols fan, like the Lady Vols stuff, I'll have something coming here in just a few minutes on that as well. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. This is Frank Rock. This is the House Foreign Sports Channel. Make sure you like, you share. If you've liked the content and have not already, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel as well. But I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And last but most certainly not least, go Vols. Me.